When the Taliban retook control of Afghanistan in August of 2021, they sought to reassure Afghans and the international community that the rights of women and girls would be respected and that they would remain active members of Afghan society. Nearly a year and a half later, however, the situation for women in the country is dire. The Taliban have effectively barred women and girls from secondary schools and universities. They've restricted their employment, and they've even altogether banned their presence in many public spaces. So what does this mean for the future of Afghanistan? And is there any hope in sight for Afghan women? Joining me to help answer that question is Adela Raj. She's former Afghan ambassador to the United States and current director of Princeton University's Afghanistan Policy Lab. Adela, thank you so much for joining us on Upfront. Uh, you're currently in communication with women in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk to us a little bit about what life is like for mm -hmm. Afghan women at the moment? Um, thank you uh, for um, raising this really important and critical question uh, for women of Afghanistan, for all those who live inside the country. And as you said, in the dire situation, it truly is. It's dark, it's gray, it's difficult. Uh, it's almost everybody is trying to grasp to something that gives them hope and that hope is um, getting eliminated on a daily basis. And imagine a society where um, for women, education was the window uh, of opportunity, growth, space, freedom, prosperity, and that window is shut at this moment. And I wanna put myself in the shoes of those women and those young girls, which for me personally, uh, it wasn't too long ago in my life, 25 years ago when I was first um, when I was in Afghanistan and Taliban for the first time came to power, I was among one of those women and those young girls where my window of hope was shut and I couldn't think of uh, a brighter day and I wanted to... When you say it was shut, you mean were you doing had access to public space, to school? Yes, exactly, exactly. There was uh, no space for women as public that we could go. Uh, we uh, had to be always, whenever we were outside, we had to have one of our uh, male family member. And I come from a family where I have three younger brothers. So that was pretty hard. And I also come from a family where education truly mattered, like too many Afghan families. And uh, growing up one morning, waking up when your schools are closed and you're told to stay at home, um, I just simply couldn't process it. And I always tell in, um, people the story that as a Muslim, we have a prayer of tajud when we wake up in the middle of the night and we pray, uh, and we feel that's, that's when uh, your prayers will be accepted the most. And I remember myself waking up uh, quite a few nights and praying and asking for a miracle for the schools to open up. Right now, we're seeing a very similar um, situation, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Taliban has effectively banned girls mm -hmm. and women from attending secondary schools, mm -hmm. also from attending university. Yes. Now, you are in conversation with people on the ground there. Yes, yes. From uh, most of the work that we're doing at the Afghanistan Policy Lab, an important element of our work is to be engaged with people who are inside the country, with women inside the country. Because I always say, regardless of how much we try to make sure that we could reflect what life for them is, but it's extremely important to have their true voice. And through those conversations, whenever we have had with a woman in the country, uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, that element of hope is dying. Mm -hmm. uh, it's for, especially for those women who are the breadwinners for their households uh, when they are asked not to go to work anymore. Uh, for those uh, young girls where, um, as I said, school was, where they could see uh, freedom in future and it's not there anymore. For those young girls who are going to the university and, and they just were in last year of their university as, mm -hmm. and uh, just getting in touch with them and hearing their stories that they don't know when next time they can go back to the university, that's painful. How much of that dissipating hope is connected to the fact that there was a promise mm -hmm. that... Mm -hmm. women would have access mm -hmm. to these things, mm -hmm. that it wouldn't be mm -hmm. like before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and now it's shifted very quickly. Is, is that a big part of this as well, the kind of pivot? It is, it is. But um, frankly speaking, with a lot of Afghans, even then, if you would have spoken, especially with women, I think there was a very element, there was, a, there was an element of pragmatism and realism. Because uh, we had not forgotten when, for the first time, Taliban were in power. Um, they, they had 
banned the schools and women from public spaces and working outside. So there was somehow that element of nightmare. Everybody was waiting. It will arrive and, and they will go in that direction. It was just a matter of time. I think there was that element of hope, still hoping that maybe they won't, but they did. Yeah. Yeah. So it's um, now expecting that they may ever change their mind. I think that probably may not happen because uh, just from the sake of who they are and how what they believe uh, and uh, what they have been saying, even we even initially when they talked about um, girls' school, if we look at every formal statement at the time that came out, not individual uh, positions that some of their members had expressed, but the formal statements as as a, as a as a group that was released at the time, in each single statement, their language was the same. It had not changed. They said they will allow girls to go to school based on Islamic Sharia. And even now, when they have banned the schools, they have not said that women are not allowed to go to school. They say women are not, cannot go to school for the time being until they prepare the right space for them. And we know, as Af Afghan women... And, and so, so the pretext is safety? Yes. No, um, or security? Not really. I think for them, when you go with a level uh, of deeper conversation, they, uh, they assume to create a more Islamic environment for them at school. And which for us, we know that's a way for them to say, no, we're not going to open up schools. Because they did the exact same thing 25 years ago. They used the same language that they are using today. One of the things we're seeing now is resistance. We mm -hmm. see women taking to the streets in protest. Yes. Yes. Uh, we see men even. Yes. We see male students who are walking out of their yes. final exams at university. I mean, these are yes. sort of extraordinary developments. Yes. Uh, is this a sign that things won't go back to the 90s, that things are moving in a different direction, or at least people won't stand for it? Look, um, that's exactly for many of us hope is. It is the people of Afghanistan. It is the society, the society that believes in, in prosperity, in education, in wisdom, in knowledge. And that comes both from men and women, and especially the last 20 years. The level of investment, the level of education that had changed in Afghanistan, the growth that has happened, it's, it's people are there. Yeah. People have not left. It, they still live in Afghanistan, and even now, a lot of families are trying to find ways. We had a conversation last night with my brothers, and, and it was exactly around the education uh, area that how each single family inside the country are still trying and knocking every single door to find a way for their daughters to go and study. And that comes to the brothers as well. And that was a sign, as you saw, with uh, university students and in Jalalabad and Kandahar and in Kabul as well when they walked away. when. The regime said that women cannot take or cannot come to take the exam and cannot come to the classroom. That was their way of revolt. And today's women's demonstration on the street, too, I always say that requires courage, that requires bravery, that requires um, ability and strength to be still able to come and say no to, to an authority that doesn't believe in... in education of women, and, and women are not giving up. The society is not giving up. Before you go, you know, when you think about what, what the next uh, year or two will look mm. like, what, what's your forecast for the people of Afghanistan? Uh, uh, look, um, the forecast, especially if we start with the uh, Taliban, um, I don't think so we should expect any, that they may change their mind and start to make the right decision. Um, uh, there is no prediction, there is no even statistic probability that why we should even put our thinking in that direction, that they yeah. will change their thinking. So it's almost like buckle up and prepare for the worst. And in terms of the overall environment, um, it's, it's hard, it's very difficult. I think there are days I sit back and I'm trying to find an element of hope for myself to move forward, and it's very, very difficult. But then I look into very small stories, the stories of individuals who are inside the country, and I know some of them, and some of them are my own cousin, who run homeschools right now. Young girls have came out to run homeschools and teach their, um, 
neighborhood kids, uh, young girls. And to me say, look, that element of resistance within Afghans is still there. And we will continue to have that resistance. And in order to make life uh, bearable and accept, um, feasible in a way that, um, that's, that utilize what we have in front of us. But I think my takeaway is it's almost buckling up for difficult days, but we should not um, disengage with Afghan people. Uh, I have to be very clear. I think engaging with Taliban is a different argument, and I'm very but, but strong. But definitely the people. The people. That makes complete sense. Adela Ross, thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure. Thank you. Everyone, that is our show. Upfront, we'll be back next week.